we have seen what is the stress field for a, a dislocation so we have seen how to find out a stress field for a screw dislocation as well as for an edge dislocation so as you know that for a dislocation there is an elastic distortion around it so that distortion must associated with some energy or we can call it as an elastic strain energy here in this part we are try to find out or quantify this elastic strain energy around a dislocation so let's consider a case of a screw dislocation so we have a screw dislocation here we have seen this figure already and we have marked our coordinate axis x y z in this way and r not is a radius of core let us write down so we have r not this is a core region and where theory of elasticity can't be applied also you can see a dislocation line which is marked yellow so let's let us write that down also so we have seen this dislocation line and which is infinite okay and let's so this is our Burgess vector which is parallel to a dislocation line and thus this dislocation is a screw dislocation now we if you want to find out an energy or strain in energy elastic strain energy associated with a dislocation we must know a stress state at a given point and we have figured it out what is a stress state for a dislocation for a screw dislocation we have also got introduced to elastic stored energy per unit volume as let me write it down so we have we have seen this relation that is u which is elastic stored store energy per unit volume as sigma uh, 1 by 2 sigma ij into epsilon ij and we can write this in terms of stress also and in terms of strain also so i can write it this as 1 upon e here i can write it as sigma ij square so this e will be for normal stresses and for shear stresses this e will be replaced by g so you can write this elastic stored energy in this fashion where basically this is the same expansion of the same relation so u is equal to 1 upon 2e sigma xx square plus sigma y y square plus sigma zz square plus 1 upon 2g tau x square tau xy square plus tau yz square plus tau xz square so let us correct this also here it should be tau xz square and for a screw dislocation we have figured it out what can be the stress state or what are the stress components so we know that there are no normal components and we just have only shear components that is tau xz and tau yz now if you replace this in this relation what you get u as that is u x y will be 1 upon 2 g g p upon 2 pi whole square and you add these terms you square these terms and add them together what you get a relation as u is equal to g b square upon 8 pi square 1 upon x square plus y square now i can write this relation in terms of r also so we have seen that let us let us write it again so we have x and y and this is r and this was theta so i can write this relation that this so this becomes y and this becomes x and i can write this 1 upon x square plus y square as 1 upon r square so we can write this now let's say if we want to find out an elastic store energy for a, an annular ring so let, let us mark that also here that annular region let's say on this cylinder i'm marking this on a cylinder so let's say i have i want to find out an energy for this annular region having thickness dr and let's consider this cylinder or annular region go
like this and let's consider that this length of this cylinder to be L and let us consider that length to be unity for our calculation let us consider that L to be 1 so what you can write it here that uh, energy now let me write that the total energy will be gb square upon 8 pi square 1 upon r square 2 pi r into dr where l is like we i'm what i'm doing basically is multiplying it with the volume and here the length is unity so for this annular region or this annular ring what you can say that the u should be equal to gb square upon 8 pi square 1 upon r square is the total energy into multiply the volume of this annular region which which is nothing but 2 pi r into dr into l which is which is here to be equal to 1 now you can write this u as gp square upon 4 pi dr upon r now if we want to find out the total strain energy per unit length it is elastic strain energy per unit length so we can integrate this energy from r naught to r so let's say let me write it down here let's say we have this cylinder which has a length r and it has a core region which has a radius r naught so what we want to find out is total energy associated with this cylinder so that we can do it for from r naught to r is in core region the theory of elasticity fails so we want to find out an total store energy or total elastic strain energy per unit length to be from r naught to r and we can get it using this relation that is energy equal to from in we can integrate this from r naught to r gp square upon 4 pi dr upon r and what you get is that elastic strain energy per unit length to be gp square upon 4 pi ln of capital r upon r naught so this is an important relation which we get for total strain energy per unit length of a screw dislocation so we know that this is a core region which we haven't accounted for so you can write the total energy to be equal to ed which is or what i can say that this is let me correct it so here i can say that it is ed or elastic stored energy or whatever i have written it as ed is nothing but the energy of a dislocation which is nothing but this el elastic stored energy per unit length of a screw dislocation plus e core and for from many theoretical studies or computer simulation rather to be very specific you can say you can find out that e core is directly proportional to the b square so in here in this case also you can see that this total strain energy per unit length is proportional to b square and e core that is core energy or energy of this core is also proportional to b square so that so from these two results what i can say that the total energy of this screw dislocation is proportional to b square so this is an important observation and this will be using for understanding how dislocation splits up this is very important result that energy of a dislocation energy per unit in length of a dislocation let me write this down dislocation is proportional to b square this is very important result while understanding dislocations so now let's consider a strain energy for an edge dislocation 
So we know the stress state for an edge dislocation. We have found out which we have sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma zz, and you have shear stresses also tau xy and tau yx. So in case of an screw dislocation, we just have a shear stresses. We didn't have normal stresses. But in case of an edge dislocation, we have normal stresses always uh, and also shear stresses too. So we follow the same approach for an edge dislocation. We have these stresses and we know that this elastic strain energy per unit volume for is given as 1 upon 2e sigma xx square plus sigma yy square plus sigma zz square plus 1 upon 2g tau x square plus tau yz, yz square and this must be here also let me correct it so it must be tau xz and we use the same approach we plug in these values here and what we get the total strain energy per unit length we can get the similar fashion or in a similar fashion this relation so you can say that elastic stored energy here for an edge dislocation we can find it out as from r naught to r gb square upon 4 pi 1 minus mu dr upon r and you get a relation that is elastic strain energy per unit length for an edge dislocation to be gb square upon 4 pi 1 minus mu ln of r upon r naught so here also we are not considering a core of the dislocation so the total energy we can write it as el it is this elastic strain energy or energy of this dislocation plus e core and here also from many computer simulations studies e core has been found out to be directly proportional to the b square and you can write this total energy to be alpha gb square this is an important relation between energy of a dislocation to its Burgess vector. So for both screw and edge dislocation, the strain energy or elastic strain energy per unit length of the dislocation is proportional to the square of its Burgess vector. Here in this case, this alpha for most of the metals or alloys, it varies from 0.5 to 1. Now in this case, let's find out what is this elastic strain energy per unit length of a dislocation. As you know that it depends upon R0 which is the radius of the core and R which is the dimension of the crystal or this here in this case it's a cylinder. So let's consider some values here. So let's consider shear modulus to be equal to 4 into 10 to the power 10 Newton per meter square r not to be equal to 1 nanometer r that is capital r should equal to 1 millimeter this is the maximum grain size which you can get so that's why we have considered this has to be r equal to 1 millimeter and you can consider b that is purchase vector to be 0.25 and what are the typical value of elastic strain energy per unit length of a dislocation which we get is 6 electron volts per unit length of a dislocation. So this is an energy that is 6 electron volts per unit length of a dislocation for an edge dislocation with which we have calculated here. So you can see that the EL depends on R and R0 and let's consider its variation with respect to R. So we have this elastic strain energy per unit length of a dislocation as g b square upon 4 pi 1 minus mu ln of r upon r naught and let's consider the variation here so let's consider a cylinder of thickness dr and here on x axis i use r and on y axis that is change in elastic energy with respect to change in the radius so d e l upon dr we are plotting here now and it varies in this fashion so you can see that at r equal to r naught this dl turns out to be zero and for typical values of d you will have an energy of a dislocation somewhere here and however if you can see that when when you reach this r is 
reaching to be R0, what you can see that the elastic strain energy increases and it is approaching towards infinity for this R equal to R0. So we have two results. Let us write it down. So when R is reaching to R0 or we are reaching towards core, you have reaching towards infinity. Or when we see that when R is, or let's say here R is reaching infinity, this elastic stored energy tends to zero. So we can see that this elastic strain energy or away from a dislocation will not have much strain energy or elastic strain energy. However, we have very uncomfortable result where R reaches to R0 or near core of the dislocation. You can see that the elastic strain energy tends to infinity. Now let's consider a screw dislocation here and now let us consider when you have Poisson's ratio to be equal to 1 upon 3, you can see that for an edge dislocation, the elastic energy per unit length will be almost 3 by 2 that of a screw dislocation. So let's, if you put this value to be here in this relation, so this Poisson ratio, we have seen that this is for mostly metals and in metals also we have it for FCC or BCC crystal structures. We have seen that this Poisson ratio assumes to be value of 1 upon 3. And for such materials you can see that uh, elastic energy of an edge dislocation is almost 3 by 2 or 1.5 times higher than that of a screw dislocation. So with this I will stop here.